Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are One of Us Adventures. In this week's video, we're going to be installing a brand new curvy ceiling in our Mercedes Verio. We decided to go for something a little bit different because we wanted a more of a, a vintage feel, like look in our van. But we're going to take you through the process of transforming from this look to this curvy beauty in this video. Hope you enjoy. Please let us know what you think down below in the comments. Well, a moment of madness. Last week, we went to our local tin merchants and selected the wood for our ceiling. I don't have many places to store all this plywood, so I just need to make a space in my garage for the time being for it to stand in. Well, it's here. We've got it stored on here. This is bendy plywood. You can see that it is very flexible. Um, so I've just tried to store it between these two sheets of insulation. And then down here, we have strips of birch plywood for something very special for the ceiling, we hope. Some sort of bird trauma is occurring. Step one really is to find the centre of the bus. We're doing that now. We're going to mark it out with masking tape. And in that way, when we put the um, plywood in lengthwise, we know that we've got straight edge button up against straight edge and we should be true all the way along. Method one that we've come up with, I call it Richard's painted um, stick device, is a 165 piece of wood, scrap wood, that we're going to put across and drill a hole in the middle of it and then make sure we are resting it on exactly the same datums. So on this one is every other rib um, because the ribs are different on the Vario and that way we should be able to get a dead centre line. So the method one, let's see if that works. Of summer. So we've been at it for a couple of hours already. Um, we've drawn a no, we haven't. There's, there's a lot of thinking involved. We've drawn a line. Rich has painted his stick worked. We've got a central line. We've cut the first piece to length because we want to run it to one of these battens, one of these ribs, sorry, in the roof. And we've used this piece here to see what the curvature will look like. And so far, going to be working and going we're going to push it right in up there. It does, it does flex point. quite nicely and it pulls right in against the um, like insulation on the roof. And it's raining. Of course it's raining. Dave keeps no, 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 pretending no, 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 he's not, not looking for his tape measure, but he is. <laughs> you were. <laughs> Okay, so up in the voids up here, we're going to use this thermofly stuff. So this is 75% British sheep's wool and 25% uh, recycled materials, you know, plastic bottles and cotton and stuff like that. Um, so it's, you know, all, com all good for the environment and, yeah. and the thermal values of it are really, really good. So we're going to cut this open now and run it up in here before we put the ceiling up just so we've insulated in behind as well as on the top. I wonder if you can feel the lanolin in that. It smells like sheep. No. Oh yeah, it smells like... Not like, it doesn't smell like really bad, but you can tell that it's a sheep. You can feel the, like the, the fats in it a bit as well, I think. Double layered. Ooh! All the excitement is double layered. Oh, this is <laughs> it. Right, so we just measured and now we are cutting the sheep. <laughs> Sheep's wool. Sheep. Not actually cutting a, a live sheep. It smells like farm. It's about poo in there. Some ticks, probably. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what we're thinking of doing is we're going to shove it up in there like that, basically, and down in that void down in there. Yeah. So we just need to cut it in half. We should be able to do two bits of it like that. Make it nice in there, cozy, delicious in the bus. You're just cutting it with these scissors. We shoved it into all the nooks and crannies. When I say we, it was mostly cow because I gave up after this first piece and got back to the cutting. <laughs> now we've got all this left to do and the other side. We then trial fitted the first piece of plywood, realising it wasn't quite right for this part. But we do reuse this later on. You live and learn. Looking good, Cal. Oh, I'm filling in gaps. Yeah, you know. yeah, there's lots of nooks and crannies that you've got to shove more into. And Cal says that it's real fun on the bun. So much fun on my bun. And then what Dave and I are doing is just recutting a piece of plywood. Because the first one was just practice, so it's practice, isn't it? Just practice, not wrong. It's just a bit of a practice. Um, so yeah, we've got like a stunt piece now, which is grand. After we'd recut the piece of plywood, we've secured it in place. We didn't manage to record putting this first one in place, but we've got a little bit of a longer video later on to show you the process of it. But basically what we're doing here is drilling a pilot hole through that's smaller than the screw just to guide the screw through into the metal panel because we found that it's triple skinned in some places which was causing some of the screws to, to snap prematurely which was an interesting thing to find out so we've erected a crime seat tent a crime scene tent but it's not we going to route out around here. Now we've roughed it out with a little saw. I'll let him get on with that. It's loud and dusty. Stinks. We've got a piece up. Brackets back on for the hecky. Um, the curve looks really good. This is the most difficult bit. It's taken us two attempts, which is a little bit frustrating. But again, I'm going to share that because this is the reality of it. Um, thankfully, I do have a spare piece. Grain looks beautiful. Um, really pleased with that. In the living area, we're not going to see that. But in the bedroom area, I think we might end up maybe maintaining or staining this or varnishing it because it's really nice looking. And the curve is lovely. So... Along this edge here, we do need to trim and route it to the top edge of that. Um, but that'll be a job for right at the end. So you can see here we've drilled out, I'm going to put some grommets in here, but we've drilled out for the cables that come out in our cupboard, cables that come out for our LED strip and our under cabinet fan. So that's all out already. Okay, so Sunday. See, we've got a piece up. We'll cut around up here, which looks neat. I'm hoping today to crack on with the rest of it. Now we've got a plan of attack with it all. Come out this morning, and our sheep's full insulation, you can smell it. It doesn't smell like terrible, but you can tell that it's, you know, a natural product. And we looked into this, and it's quite normal, I think, over the period of weeks the sheepy smell will dissipate um, but it looks really good we crammed it in all the nooks and crannies it should keep us nice and warm so because the wall's coming down here for hopefully the third and final time I've moved this set of wires 
for here. So there's not many in here actually. I've got a 230 volt cable coming down for a plug socket here. Um, some USB cables, the control panel for the heater um, and the bathroom light switch comes down in this one. And the power for the heater as well comes down in this one. So there's not as many cables as we had to move to the other side, but I've moved them so we can, when we terminate the wall here, down this pillar, we can hide it all in there basically. These cables will come out in our overhead cabinet. Didn't want them coming out in the bathroom because it would have looked very odd. Whereas here, we can make it behind a false panel where the switch will go on and it'll look really neat. Each piece was cut to width first before we cut out the other sort of straight edges with the plunge saw. We're gonna cut out Roughly with the jigsaw first of all on the skylight this time. Just double check in those measurements. These adjustable ceiling supports were invaluable. Bought them especially for this job and we were so glad we did. You can use them horizontally and vertically to just aid with holding the panel in place whilst you screw it in. So once again good use out of the uh, roof rack. Welcome to a very dreary Friday. So um, you can see we've got two pieces up, cables all pulled through, which is good news. We've got two more pieces to put up to finish the main living area of the bus. They've been taking quite a while actually. Um, I can understand why people have not done this wide scale because it's not straightforward, but we're gonna try and get the other two pieces up today. I do need to at the front, bolster this area here. So these pillars here, they're only about five centimeters wide. And I need it to be about 15. So what I'm going to do is probably take this piece of insulation down and install some batten across here for the ceiling to secure to, because it comes to about here. The panels that we have are two and a half meters long. So longer than your normal plywood but not quite long enough for what we want to do. They would have been if the ribs on the roof were spaced slightly differently. But as you remember, we cut them to run center, central to the beams. For obvious reasons, we want them to be secure um, and not sag. So that's gonna be this morning's job. I'm gonna take this down and replan this in. Um, Dave's coming in a minute and he's gonna help today which again is invaluable can't kind of do this on my own and it's not something that I can get the girls to help me with um, so let's crack on with this bit to extend the roof ribs I'm using this sealer so pockets drilled these out and then I'm gonna clamp this up and use some some um, sticks all as well on those so we've got this much extra to screw into welcome to our 90s kitchen it's fine it works <laughs> um just measuring really just to ignore all of the stuff in the cupboard realistically what i've had cabinets need to be so i've had a measuring heater and these are only about 26 centimeters deep they fit plates they fit this that and the other so as long as we've got an internal depth of that we'll be able to store quite a lot of stuff in there it doesn't sound like much but that is what these cabinets are so we're going to work roughly to that to get them in the van. This button here, well, there's my apple, will form the bottom half or the bottom mounting point for the cabinet. So high cabinets that will run all the way along here. So we've got nine riv nuts in here, along here. And the next bit, we're gonna put a button along here for the top securing point. We're doing this first. So when we put the roof on, this sits on top of it. We're making another jig for here to be able to determine where we need to run this button. 
So what I'm suggesting is that we have a jig that sits here and comes up to here. So we're gonna make a rudimentary one just so we can get the line the same off of this. Oh, it's hot. Yeah. Oh, it's embedded in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was hot. Each rib nut was popped in and tightened up before we made sure the wood fitted. So essentially we use the jig to mark these lines, we line the wood up with that, drilled through and we've got a rib nut now in every rib along. So we've got one, two, three, which will support the cabinets evenly. We're going to put a fourth one in down there and then along the bottom up to here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to have a shelf up the front here on these one, two, three. So it's not strictly to do with the roof build, but it should save us some time later. Um, and we'll know that when we've got our cabinets up, they'll be super secure. So that's in the bit. At the front, we have the box that houses all the gubbins for the uh, sliding door. So we've had to cut out a rectangle from here and we're just finessing that. Because this bit here will still curve round in front of it. And this needs to run parallel with the box. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll box that box back in. Okay, so we've got the third piece up now. We've got the batten all the way along for our future overhead cabinets, which are gonna begin here. This part of it here is gonna be used for a shelf, an open, like an open cabinet, if you think of it like that. And then this piece will be the front edge of our cabinets. It's riv nutted in all the way along. Um, so we know that that's gonna be a secure base and we'll be able to build these into our overheads. Um, like I said, strange thing to do now, but it's the right time to do it because it means that we've our fasteners are in one less job to do. We know that these are the correct length as well. Give or take five, 10 centimeters each end, which we've left to trim off. Um, and it's looking really good. So we've got one more piece to do. Yeah, we've not made it easy for ourselves doing this, but I think it does look good. And, um, there's probably a good reason why people don't do it. Either because it takes too long or it's, it, it's just a bad idea, I'm not sure, but we think it looks nice. And the open areas that we've got, so for example here, um, in the bedroom where we're not having an overhead cabinet, it just looks really nice. So the only other way that we've seen that we could have achieved a similar look is if we went with like plastic cladding um, or tongue and groove, which are both viable options but we wanted to give this a go. Each of the four days of the this part of the build has been involved clearing the garage out because it's been raining. Um, so it's amazing how all this time adds up, but here's a chance to have a look at our cool mini. We love it. This is the last piece that we're going to cut in. Um, just like this side, we're having overhead cabinets run, but only from here, this pillar, to roughly this pillar. And then we're going to have open shelves here. We're going to run a batten all the way along, like we did on the other one. And then one in the ceiling for the full depth cabinets. Um, and then that way, We've got a place to secure it, and then what we'll do is show you how we bend that around because we've not got that on video yet, I don't think. So we'll show you this on this last piece. First, we had to shore up around the max air. Around the edge of the max air, we've got a gap about 
one and a half centimeters so what i'm going to do is make up some strips from some scrap wood i've got to make a square to go in and around it just to pack it out the reason for that is when we screw up into the frame of the max hair for the roof we don't want it to be uneven and also we're going to use that edge um, to route round so it's important that we do that now step one was to measure it to width so we've measured it to 1100 i'm going to take this strip off here and then cut your various shapes out so for this piece we've got hole saws for the cables and then at this end we've got an oversized or well, undersized hole for the max air or well, second step is cutting it out Early in the project, I was recommended this saw by a lovely couple called River and T, um, aka Slowly Wild on Instagram, and it's been a game changer. So you can set this to be the correct depth for the plywood, and it gives you arrow straight cuts. It does take a while to set the saw up, but it's well worth it for the accuracy that you get. So with this board, I set it to cut the full length first. meaning I moved the rail in the middle, make sure I got an accurate cut all the way along. The rough cuts that we were going to route out later were done with the jigsaw because I wasn't worried about too much tear out on these pieces. Okay, so when you're selecting your bendy plywood, you need to consider which way it needs to bend, because it will only bend in one direction. So mine's long grain, which basically means when it, when the wood bends, it will make a long, thin tube. Um, if you need it, so you know, my mine bent around this way, around the vehicle, as you can see in pictures. If you want it to go the other way, so across the vehicle, if you want it to go the other way, so across the vehicle, you're going to need short grain. And the easiest way to remember that is basically if when you when you bend it up, if you bent it around the whole way, which you can't, but if you did, you'd make a short tube. Um, with the long grain stuff, when you bend it, it would make a long thin tube. So yeah, you need to consider that when you're making your purchase of the bendy plywood, whether you need long grain, so a long thin tube, or short grain, a short fat tube. So even if you have three of you, these are a lifesaver. Um, so they're designed for holding up ceilings like plasterboard and stuff like that. But we're using them to support our roof. So this kind of comes in in three steps. Basically the board goes up and we line it along our center line that we did first. In this case, we're going to line it along here and then space it by two millimetres. So we've got that expansion gap. And then for our build, we've got cables that come through into our overhead cupboards. So we need to make sure we pull those through first as it goes up. And then what you do is you gently put pressure on the board to bring it in and bend it in to the radius that you want. So we're going to match this radius up here. And then basically work your way from the center line along the ribs of the vehicle up to where it starts to bend. So it's important also you don't screw too far because it will skew the bend. And then the final step that we do is we push it up evenly. So we've got an even gap all the way along. And then what you'll see us do is actually turn these around to be spanned across the vehicle to hold them in place. So we can screw through into here um, with self-tapping metal screws. And then for this bit, obviously, we've got the piece of wood that's going over the top and that's going to hold it in there nice and secure. This has all been left proud all around here because we've got the pattern for the max air. That's pretty common to be fair. So if this works, this is a good method for going around if it doesn't then like most things we'll find out and uh, you know not to do it so 
Yeah, let's write this out now. I'm probably not going to film this because it's extremely dusty. Just emptying out the bus to make sure that I can clean up easily afterwards. Also, got these neat little cable um, grommet slash snugs to go in and around here. Let me show you those. Put the rest in after we varnished. One of the final jobs was to use the Dremel with a wood piece in it to go all the way along to cut off all the excess and then we routed off the rest of it. Yeah, that was a nasty last job. They have did the routing, cut off with the Dremel first. We've got a nice neat edge now all the way along. Just need to hoover up. Another power tool has bitten the dust. Yeah, I don't know how we keep doing it. We are really pleased with how it turned out, especially as when we ordered the plywood, we didn't really know if it was going to work or not because we've not seen it done in a Mercedes very before, had we? No, so the curves really do follow all the way down the vehicle. We've only got one join the way that we did it because another option would have been to use short grain ply. So you would have had four joins down the vehicle rather than the one that we've got in the middle. And we're really, yeah, quite thrilled with how it's turned out. It's beautiful. I'm gonna probably zone it and how we decorate it, aren't we? Yes, we've got a bedroom plan in our minds and we've got a plan that we think for the front of the vehicle. If you've got any questions, we would love to hear them. Um, Likewise, if you just want to say hi, please say hi. Love to hear from you. And give us a thumbs up. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you have a fantastic week. And we'll see you soon. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.